Hi, and welcome to the third episode of Metastatic Modernity. I'm Tom Murphy. Today's topic is early life on planet Earth, and it's our next step in the journey to putting modernity into context. So we're going to start with a kind of clock that represents the timeline of Earth, and some of this is hard to see, so I've put the relevant information over to the right. Um, and where appropriate, I've used the same color scheme for the text as the bars that run around the outside. And where that wasn't really applicable, I drew a few arrows to point out where they are. So the Earth itself is 4.55 billion years old, and life started not that long after, about 4 billion years after, uh, after the end of the heavy bombardment. And then photosynthesis, um, roughly at 3.30 on this clock, and then oxygenation by 6 p.m. on this clock. And then eukaryotes, our brand of life, at maybe 6.30, uh, branching into multicellular arrangements around, say, 8.30. And then animals came on at around 10 p.m. And then sometime around uh, you know, 10, 10 30, we had the Cambrian explosion, which is when biodiversity really just went kind of bananas. And um, actually, I should look into when actual bananas came along. It was, it was a bit later than that, but uh, biodiversity went kind of crazy. Nuts. When did nuts come along? Um, and so um, that really kicked a few things off, and things began, you know, began to be interesting, we might say. Um, and then we had land, conquering of land by plants and then animals about 400 million years ago. And then, you know, mammals and dinosaurs came into being around the same time, around 200 million years ago. Dinosaurs then were uh, killed off by the, the big uh, meteor comet impact around 66 million years ago. And then we had humans, and you can't even really see the bar, uh, two and a half million years ago, just before midnight in this representation. So that's the um, overall timeline, the, the, the overall picture. So it might be tempting to say, well, you know, for most of that time, it was pretty boring and single cellular and, you know, it didn't really get exciting until, say, the Cambrian uh, explosion. I want to try to convince you otherwise that life was far from idle during that three and a half billion years. That's the period during which life solved the hardest problems of how to live and how to be a living organism. And it's an incredible story and an incredible accomplishment, um, absolutely crucial to human survival. So to illustrate this, I'm gonna use the amoeba as an example. An amoeba has something like 13,000 genes compared to our 20,000, not terribly different. And we use about a third of the amoeba's genes ourselves. So that tells you a lot right there. We have a lot of kinship and a lot of, um, you know, commonality with, with these uh, simple life forms. And what is that about? Well, there are a lot of shared challenges that all life has to sort of uh, overcome. One of them is just simply replication. So DNA and RNA. And I can't stress how incredible that mechanism is. And every life uses it. We don't know of any life that doesn't use uh, that basic code for how to build uh, itself. And a lot of those codes are for the, the genes that tell proteins how to be built. And proteins are really essential in a cell. They are the workhorses on the factory floor that kind of organize um, how things arrange and fit together and and uh, pulling parts that need to be pulled together together. They're catalyzing and, and um, kind of promoting the chemical reactions that need to happen. They're very complicated, um, and there are many, many different kinds, and they're just essential to all life, uh, worked out by these early organisms and all using the same 20 amino acids. So the um, you know some of the, the problems that were solved are cell membranes so that you know, the material could get in and out of the cells, um, you know, the good stuff coming in and the waste going out. That's very important for every sort of life. So um, mobility, um, getting around is important. And just the simple act of, of contracting and expanding is a key to mobility, which is how our muscles work. And so we're basically using the same 
uh, process, and this is a, a, a problem that was solved for getting around long ago, metabolism, super important. We all have to eat and use energy. Uh, this one is a, a good example of how we basically appropriated, um, we not just humans, but you know animals appropriated mitochondria, uh, bacteria specializing in this metabolism. So um, a lot of heritage, heritage there. Sensing is really important for light and heat and uh, chemical gradients and um, and touch and tactile kinds of uh, information and environmental tolerance because you know you have to know how to handle varying conditions of hot and cold and uh, light and dark and wet and dry so very impressive skill set to be able to navigate and live and and procreate in this world all solved by these things. And there are a couple other points I want to make. One is that these things are such geniuses at figuring out these problems. We're still scrambling to try to understand what they're doing. We don't have it all figured out. Um, we're, we're behind. We're playing catch up to these brilliant machines that figured all this out. Um, and and I, I use the word machines, which is a little bit unfair, but it leads me to my next point, which is that Anything that we build absolutely pales in comparison. We've never built anything even close, not remotely as amazing as life. So from my own experience, I built an apparatus that shot laser pulses at the reflectors left on the moon by astronauts measuring to millimeter accuracy. And we're going to get the math ruler again, millimeter accuracy, the distance between Earth and moon as a test of general relativity. And it was a very complicated apparatus that had a lot of parts that had to interact and and uh, work together and you know no small feat but absolutely pales in comparison to an amoeba i mean not even in the same galaxy it's just night and day different um so nothing that we build comes even close to the amazingness of life um on the topic of amoebas is geniuses I want to recommend that if you haven't seen it, uh, the hilarious video by Z Frank on slime molds called the smartest slime. Um, these things can basically remember where they've been. They solve mazes. They can learn from their experiences and pass on that experience to others. They come in contact with, uh, they use them to design, uh, an efficient, uh, transit system around Tokyo. And they did just as good a job as human engineers might do, uh, in terms of efficiency and, and, uh, and good quality. So pretty amazing uh, creatures. We don't give them enough credit. So the main point though, is that we're, we're nothing without that three and a half billion years of life sorting out these hard problems um, and, and how to just basically operate in this world. We inherited uh, or copied really all of those key features and rely on them every second of every day. Uh, we, without that foundation we couldn't exist as humans we're not it doesn't even make sense to talk about the idea of a human without that foundation and you know embellishments were added thereafter and these are nifty as well and and i don't want to give them give them a short shrift but it's incredibly important the basis that uh that early life uh gave us and it's a really big deal this is so important to who we are yet it's somewhat underappreciated, well, very underappreciated to the point where if you do an internet search for something like problems solved by early life, we completely rely upon or some variant of that. Just see what you get, just how anthropocentric are the results. It's kind of shocking. And are any of them relating to the stuff that I'm talking about in this video, or is that just completely off the radar? So fascinating little experiment. Um, and what I am trying to do with this is plug a big gap in our perspective that um, we've basically forgotten who we are, where we come from. Uh, we, we're really paying no heed to these pioneers of life, to our ancient ancestors. And without them doing what they did, we can't exist. We're nothing. We absolutely, crucially, vitally, like I said, every second of every day depend on what they figured out. So I want to encourage you to try a little bit of awe, try some respect, try approaching with humility, 
and and a bit of admiration for the genius that that we take for granted, but that's absolutely crucial to being who we are. Okay, so that's it for this episode. Next time we're going to cover evolution. And I want to encourage you to look at the Do the Math blog because I put companion pieces to these videos that have some supplementary information and kind of a, a parallel treatment of the topic, but it's not verbatim at all. So you might get something new out of it. That's at do the math.ucsd.edu. And until next time.